Good afternoon. Hi, I see Derek Lee. I think you're on um, mute. Feel free if you'd like to open up your microphone and um, you can ask questions along the way. Um, I'm fine with that. Uh, if you'd like to remain in a silent mode, that's fine. I'd spoken with uh, Meg just a few minutes ago. I'd sent her some questions, uh, I'm sorry, some answers to some questions that she had. And um, uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, <laughs> uh, they were just short little uh, sentence add-ons, um, add but um, I'm going to show you more about that in the ARC30 system on our demo today. So again, you know, if you'd like to open up your mic, that's fine. If you'd like to just sit there and watch, it's fine as well. I'll just wait for Meg to um, uh, come back on, and that way we can uh, we can get started. So I'll just put you on hold for just a second, and we'll just wait for her to come in. Um, actually, uh, right now I'm in the uh, office. Yes. So I'm gonna. I'm sorry. Oh, good. Okay. Hi, is this May? I think you're dialing in. Hi, May. I don't know if you can hear me. I see your microphone on, so we'll go ahead and uh, I'll wait for you to join in that way. Um, I just sent you those answers to your questions, and then I'll, uh, you know, we'll start uh, we'll start working on these, and I'll show you the demo on RX30. I'll open up my screen in just a second. If you don't have a mic on your, looks like you do have a mic. I hope you can hear me. Also, you have a little chat button, and if you wanted to chat with me, and that way I would know that you're here, and you can hear me, and you can let me know when you'd like to get started. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. That way you can see my screen. This is our home office, and um, I'll just go ahead and uh, get started as soon as I see your little chat pop up. I'm going to turn off some of these things so they don't pop up. Let's make sure I don't have everything popping up here. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and I'll get started. And that way um, I'll show you some of the things that you had asked me in, um, in the um, questionnaire that you had sent, the two questionnaires. Okay, so um, RX30, uh, you know, we, we have quite a few features that I think you'll really like. Um, very, very, very simple system to use. This is our main prescription filling screen. So um, there are all kinds of icons here on the left-hand side, and I can get to those in, in a little bit. This one right here is one that you had asked about a little earlier about manuals and materials. What is it that we can offer you? Well, I'm going to show you this uh, just to start off because I think this is really very helpful for you. When, um, you know, we hope you sign up with us. I mean, that's the whole idea. We would like to take you off of your PPC and then just have you, we would send you um, the server. We would send you a free server. The software is free. The hardware, uh, you know, the server is free. The training is free. There's no extra cost. And we try to reuse all of your equipment. So what we've done is we've put classes in here for you. Bear with me for a second. Oops, sorry about that. I thought I had turned this off. Um, sorry about that. Um, what we do is we put these classes in here for you. So we treat you, uh, these are lectures. These are um, basically videos. So um, we've recorded a lot of different videos that are up here. And the whole idea is for you to just kind of watch these little videos that might run 10, 15 minutes, some of them run 
as little as one minute. And what we're able to do is give you um, different fields that you could look at. In other words, different fields, how to fill and refill. Because as you see me do the demo today, you're going to say, oh, well, she made it look really easy. And it is. It's a very simple system. So we treat you like freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior in undergrad class. And what we do is we put these videos up here, how to add a patient, how to add insurance, drugs, reverse and edit, add doctors, um, do e-prescribing in the sophomore level, how to all, you know, edit and reverse. But I'm going to show you these things. But I just wanted to give you an example. Like um, these are all little videos. So what we do is this one happens to be a minute 34. So you just play it. And what it does is it gives you a chance to see how our system works while somebody is explaining this verbally to you, and you could watch it 15 times if you wanted to. Um, aside from that, you know, um, like I said, that would be more on the sophomore level. On Just on a freshman level, how do you add a doctor? You know, how do you add a drug? I know that one of the questions on that little survey was, how do you add a drug? And I'm going to show you those things today, but you don't have to just rely on what I'm saying, because I do a demo for, you know, almost an hour, and that's probably not enough time for you to learn it. So that's why we put you um, in touch with the Arc 30 University on the server. So this one happens to be five minutes long. And again, re reverse it, roll it up, um, re rewind it, play it again. That's what we want you to do. We want you to get as familiar with all these different topics as possible. Because the whole idea behind this is for you to feel like even though you've used PPC for so long, that this may not be as hard as you think. <laughs> you know, because everybody wants to stay on their current software, but um, it's not always possible. And, you know, we, we do have an end date on that one. And so what we want you to do is, you know, get comfortable with RX30. So that's what the RX30 University is. And then one of the questions had to do with the study guides. Well, right here, we can, uh, you can go to the help bar. Uh, that's what it is right here. You can go to any of the manuals. We have a training manual that's re right here, and it allows you to go in there and you can pick up anything that you want. It just shows you all the different features. I mean, you can even blow these up. They're going to be bigger on your side of the screen. And you can go into each one of these areas, and you'll be able to say how to add a patient. I mean, it's written as well. It's not just verbalized, but a lot of people think that it's easier when you are uh, looking on these manuals to just look at uh, something that's um, not just manual, but it's verbalized. So you don't have to read it and interpret it one way and not have it another. So again, the RX30 University is just right here on the left side of your screen in one of the icons. And I think it's one of the most important for a brand new customer. Now, the other thing that we offer, which I think you'll really like, is we do support not only through a telephone, but if you wanted to, you would be able to log on to our chat right in your ARC-30 system. So even while you're practicing on RX 30 we can have our support chat with you. So the live chat, it brings in who I am, and you can put your phone number if you want them to call you. You can say what, what kind of um, you know issue you're having. Are you having a hardware issue? Are you having a software issue? If you're having a software issue, you can say to the staff, right there, and they will answer you within less than a minute. Um, uh, can't uh, reverse this claim. And you can put in, you know, whatever the prescription number is, and you'll be able to start chatting, or how do you do this? How do you, you know, how do you reverse? Uh, how do you reverse? So, you know, all these different things, you can chat with our support before you even go live, and you can chat with them, obviously, afterwards. This is really a nice way in case you um, don't have the time to be on the telephone and you're working with your patients. It's just right here. It's right here in the, um, in the box. And as you can see, it's called live support. If you ever wanted to look at our website, that's what this is. This is just getting you to the Internet. Now, I wouldn't recommend that you use the server to get to the Internet. It does give you that. I mean, you could launch to it, but you might want to use a Windows system just in case you're going to some sites that may not be as um, secure as you would want. The server is, uh, you know, and you might want to toggle back and forth. We also have a report engine. Uh, we have text messaging for the patients. We also have a partial subscription, I should say a full subscription, now that we have Metaspan to facts and comparisons. So if you wanted to look up a medication 
and you wanted to access facts and comparisons, you have that information right there on the web, or you can do it while you're um, on the screen as well. This uh, little icon right here tells me that I have money that needs to be resubmitted in order for me to get a higher payout. Um, when we have plans, you submit a, a claim, we, we know exactly how much money uh, is being submitted with your AWP because we're the ones who import that file from Gold Standard. But the plans never really update their side fast enough. Well, the minute that the switch tells us that they do, and it's really kind of like in a nanosecond, these prescriptions are sitting here in your system waiting to be resubmitted. So these are all sitting here. I have a potential gain of $397. All of these plans have underpaid me. Look how much they've underpaid me. So this is what I submitted to them, and now I've got this many days before they're no longer valid. All I have to do is select them and hit resubmit, and it reverses them right there on the screen and will give me my actual claim amount. Instead of me losing that money, or I should say instead of you losing that money, um, it gives you um, the actual net gain for you. Um, and it it uh, it saves you money in the long run and gives you money back on what you should have had in the in the very beginning. And this is our STAR MTM program. This is our medication therapy management and our, um, part of our EMS, Enhanced Medication Services. So I just wanted to give you an example of, you know, some of the features that are already in there. But the more day-to-day -day things that you're going to be getting into, these are all uh, um, already on the system. You don't have to pay anything extra for them. But the main thing that, you know, we want to talk about right now has to do with being able to fill prescriptions, fill and refill. And how simple is it? Well, um, I had uh, seen, you know, questions about how do you, how do you access a patient. Well, I could, in essence, if I wanted to, I can just pull somebody's name up just like that, and it will bring in their information, and it shows me all the scripts that the patient has on their profile. So it shows me the last drug and the last refill and how many refills are left, and it does show me the copay. And then it tells me the status of the prescription. So see, these are all waiting in will call. I have these on hold for patient assistance, on hold for doctor approval. Um, these are all prescriptions, you know, that I uh, can and cannot fill. So it does show me all of them, and it colors them, color codes them. So I don't have to go, you know, reading and reading and reading. You, you have enough reading during the day. This one on the Xarelto was sent, what, uh, on 1010 uh, for a doctor fax. Now, you know, remember, I'm in a simulated fashion, so I'm not going to get any response. But it does show me that. And you can tell I've got double uh, duplicate therapy on these things. So um, let's say as an example, um, that's just one way to look up a patient. Let's just say you have another way. I want to look them up by a date of birth. I can put in their date of birth. Um, if that's a way that you like to, to find them, go ahead and find them that way. If you like to find them by uh, telephone number, um, put in a plus sign so you don't have to type in the area code and it'll give me all those patients that have that telephone number. And then if you wanted to put in a first name, a lot of times when patients are standing in front of you and they come in every single month, for some reason, maybe you just don't remember their last name, it will um, give you a chance. And all you really have to do is just bring up, you know, whoever the patient is. So I can bring them up, and then, you know, it gives me the information. Now, while we're on this one, I might as well select and fill these prescriptions. So the alprazolam and Prevenil are right there, and I could just, what we call using the uh, arrow down in spacebar, all I've done is tag them, check mark them, and then when I press enter, they'll adjudicate. Um, that's one another way to do it. Plus, the easiest way, I think, is just to go in here and type a, a, um, a patient's prescription number, because if they're on the telephone with you, they might say to you, you know, I'd like to refill, well, I've got to find one that's in there, let's see, uh, three, oh, I don't know, I'm, I'm just, 366. Okay. So here's one. I just put in his prescription number. That's all I did. I just put in the prescription and it brings up the entire prescription for you. So I have the patient's name and if you look to the right, I've got his telephone number. I've got his date of birth and his age. I've got the doctor, the phone number, the, the MPI number for the doctor. I even have the pill image on the screen. And by the way, you can also scan prescriptions in here if you'd like. I mean, you don't have to, but we always give you the pill image because it's coming from First Data Bank, so you get 
you can have a pop-up on the screen so you can see the big version, or you don't have to. You can have it just in a little small version. Um, and then I've got the quantity and dispense and refills. And then I can put in, as you can tell, uh, uh, I, I did something here where I lost my uh, uh, directions. I probably didn't put them in to begin with on the first way. Now, the origin code would automatically come through as well. And all I have to do is press the Done key. And it will go through United, and it will adjudicate through United. So let's press this red Done key. That's all you have to do. So remember, pull in the patient with the prescription number, and everything is OK. You press the Done key. It'll adjudicate. I get my claim. And there it shows me what was submitted, what was adjudicated, what the plan agreed to pay, and what the copay is, what my usual and customary is, and what my cost is. And it shows me down here in the lower right-hand corner, the plan pays. So I'm just saying to this, I'm finished with this prescription. I'm finished. So it will print out my label for me. So keep in mind, again, all I have to do is just pull in a prescription number. And again, I'll, I'll just pull something up. There's the prescription. I pull it in, and it, you know, I had this one correct. I, pu I press enter. Now, this one is asking me on a DAW because I've got a, another cost. I'm just going to bypass that for right now. And it will adjudicate for my primary. Uh-oh, I'm losing money. So I always have a little pop-up. Now, I'm going to continue on because it's going to go to the next plan. It's really fast. I'm just doing it kind of slow. And it m immediately goes through. So I'm going to show you more double billing. Let's do another one, 505, um, oh, I don't know, uh, 390. Bring it up and press Done. I adjudicate my claim. Bring up another one, 505, um, oh, I don't know, 365 or something. Bring it up, press Done. So it's a very, very simple way so you can you know get your prescriptions out the door. That's all you have to do. Prescription number. Now, if you had a whole list of them, you know a lot of times you have more than one prescription. So the patient is talking to you. Well, there's even a field for that. So it says RX list down here. So all I have to do is access that, and now I can put in 15 prescriptions if they have them. So let's just say, uh, you know, I'm just uh, randomly pulling this in. I don't even know you know who the patients are. As you can tell, I haven't found anybody that's matching. Oh, there's one. Oh. But um, what would happen is uh, you would just bring them in, and it shows you the name of the drug. It shows you how many refills are left. So if you're talking to the patient on the phone, like as an example on this one, on the Simvastatin for Ravi Mayer, I could say to him, we'll probably have to call your doctor uh, because we don't have any Simvastatin on there. Would you like us to do that for you? He says yes. So as soon as that prescription comes up, you would automatically be able to do that, or you could have done it in a previous fill. We would have already, we have a little pop-up that allows that to be sent early so that we're not waiting until the last minute. So again, all I would really have to do is press this Begin key, and each one of these would pop up one after the other, and I press Done, 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 and it adjudicates my claims. That, that's about it for refilling. Now, let's say I have um, a, a patient I'll just bring somebody in. It doesn't matter who they are. And uh, let's say, uh, I, I hope I have some scripts for him. There we go. All right, so this patient has two green prescriptions at the top. As you can tell, the status is five days left. And we might want to send these through. I don't think that the plan would object. We'll see. Um, I, all I do is use my space bar and my arrow down key. And maybe what we'll do is we'll also ask for the atorvastatin to be refilled. All right, so there's not any refills on that one, so we'll fax the doctor. So all I do is press Enter, and I press the Done key, and um, I'll just go ahead and, you know, the quantity is okay on this. Um, i got to sign off on this. This is just verifying that I'm okay with it. And then um, the next one pops up, and it will bundle your claims for you, by the way. I press the Done key, and then it will go through for adjudication. I get my plan paid. And then it will bring up the next one, which has no quantity. And you'll notice immediately there isn't any done key. There's no red done key. So right next to the right of that done key where it would have been, there's a doctor APV. That's all it is. It's just a doctor approval. So if you select that, it will fax the doctor. And it will send that doctor, you know, uh, the request. Now, if I recall this patient, see how it says 
fax request on 1020 on the atorvastatin, and these other two were in will call. So if the patient called me back and said, what's the status on my prescriptions, I would be able to tell them, so you have the date here, and then this one, uh, you know, we, we faxed it over uh, to the doctor on 1020. So you always know what's going on with the patient profile. Not only that, you can see it here, but there's also other p uh, fields within RX30 where you could check it. So if I were, like, say, a tech at the front counter, I could either pull up this uh, p patient profile or I can pull him up in another way. I can pull him up on the will call area. So, um, again, just simple. Now, if I have a new prescription for um, Mr. Mann, I can scan it in. And again, you don't have to do hard copy prescription scanning. If you want to, you can. This is just a fake prescription. And you can put in other images. You can put in, you know, a next image and scan another one and another image and scan another thing. So, you know, you have several features. But if scanning is not what you want to do, that's fine. You do not have to do it. Now, um, one of the questions had to do with a doctor. Can we search for doctors in here? And I would say absolutely yes. So let's just say there was a Dr. Um, Ming, and um, it says uh, uh, he's not found. Do you want to add him to the file? We have a million and a half doctors out there. So all I would have to do, and by the way, we do convert all of your data that's in your PPC system, all your patients, all your doctors, all your drugs, all your plans, and all of your refills. You'll even get the notes uh, that came from the system and also your allergies. You'll have all of that, too. So when I search for Dr. Ming, um, this just gives me every single Dr. Ming or, you know, a, a, a portion of the name, and it allows me to select whoever it is that I want, you know, to pull in. So it's up to you as to how you want to pull them in, and it brings in all of their name, address, city, state, and zip, their DEA, their NPI, office fax, and SureScripts information, and I can save that. So he's now part of our database, and now I can fill, um, you know, with that new doctor. But again, we would copy all of your drugs, doctors, patients, refills, plans, everything. So let's put this patient on, and uh, you, uh, one of the questions had to do with, can I pull in an NDC number? Now, you could easily scan an NDC number stock bottle. Or if you wanted to, you can just put in the name of the drug, and it will bring that in immediately. And then I can put in whatever the quantity is, and then however many refills that the doctor had uh, dispensed. And I can build my SIG any way I want. And by the way, uh, the SIGs that we give you, there's five languages. We give you English and Spanish, and then we do have uh, the other three languages to meet the California regulations. And you'll see that on the quote that Carolyn has given you. And we can match all those so that it, there's an RX Tran company that uh, delivers the, the uh, if you had Chinese, I think it's um, Korean or Chinese, uh, Korean and Chinese. I think it's Vietnamese. Um, I want to say Russian. Um, you have to forgive me. I don't know all of the exact languages, but we do offer them. And I'll show you that in a second. And then um, I just put the origin code in here, and I press the done key. So it's just that simple. And then I finish the prescription off, and it prints to the label printer. And again, if I want to recall him again, there's the hydrochlorothiazide. And then all I have to do is if I wanted to scan another prescription and put it in, it defaults to the last doctor. And let's just put this patient on maybe a cephalexin. I'll do a 250 milligram. And then I'm just going to do no refills, and I'll just say twice a day. And then I'm just going to press done, and it adjudicates. So as you can tell, simple, simple, simple. I mean, you know, it couldn't be more simple. Now, let's um, uh, reverse the claim. Uh, that was one of the questions that I was asked as well. So let's recall this patient. Let's do another script for them. And I'm going to reverse this claim as if it didn't go through. And I'm going to put another plan on there because I have Aetna that rejects. So let's give this patient um, metaprolol. And again, I could set one up so that it's a preferred drug and have it turn red. I didn't do that on this one. I'll just use this first one. I'll give this patient a 30. And I'm just going to do uh, one every day. And then I'm just going to put this, say, it was an e-script. Now I'm going to change this express script to Aetna. And the reason I want to do that is because Aetna reverses all the time and it rejects me. So I'm going to say to the system, I only want to use Aetna one time. So when I adjudicate, you're going to get a rejection screen. 
That's what rejection looks like. You saw what a paid screen looks like. So all I have to do is reverse it. And by the way, I do want to let you know that we also have Cover My Meds that automates to this. So let me minimize this for a second. I'm just going to bring this up for just a sec so you can see. And I don't know if you have Cover My Meds, but I'll show you. It automates it in the back to whatever the insurance companies it fills in this form, so you're, you don't have to do it, and you don't have to call the doctor's office. It's totally free. You, we have nothing that we charge for this, and it's all included as part of ARC-30. So if you had a prior auth that you needed, it fills in the form and goes directly. You don't even have to touch it. There isn't anything you have to touch. All right, so let's continue. Now, I'm going to edit this prescription, and um, it says it was rejected. Well, perhaps there was another plan. So I'm going to say don't use this, but use the Express Scripts. And let's go ahead, and I'm just going to say yes to that. And I press the Done key, and that prescription is going through, and I get my paid claim, and I hit the Finish key. So pretty simple, you know, not hard at all. Let's recall them again. Let's do another script for this patient. And let's go ahead and uh, put another med in. Let's put them on um, maybe a Miprazole or something, something like that. I'll do a maybe a 20 milligram. See how I've got that in red? That's uh, that's a, um, a compounder. Um, I've used that in compounding. So let's do a, a Miprazole. I'll give them a 90 count. I'll do um, one refill. Let's see how we're doing on that. And then let's go ahead and I'll do, here's the options, written, phone. I'll say it was a phone script. And then let's go ahead and we're going to reverse this one. Um, now pretend it was rejected and we're going to go ahead and reverse it. All right, so maybe I lost money on it, and that's what, really what I should have done. I should have reversed it. Uh, so let's reverse it. And now when I hit the reverse key, it reverses the claim. It says to me it was reversed. Now the red button says, what do you want to do? Are you going to print this, trace it, or detail it? I'm going to continue on. What am I going to do? I'm going to E for edit. That's what you do on all of them, or you're going to hold it. You know, normally what we would do is um, always try to get the script through. I don't want to be holding it and waiting. The patient's there. So I'm going to E for edit. All these other things that you see here are very, very minimally used, very minimally. Edit or hold are what you're normally going to do. So I'm going to E for edit. Now you can tell the color has changed. This is, um, you know, a maroonish, pinkish color. And this gives me a chance to change anything. So if I want to change that drug, and I want to put a different omeprazole in there, I can say I'll use Dr. Reddy. Say, you know, my pricing on it was terrible. And then all I have to do is press this Done key, and now it's going to go through for adjudication, and I get my paid claim. Now, let's say that this patient then has a coupon card. Um, let's say we're going to recall him, and now we're going to um, do another script for him, and he says, guess what, I've got a coupon card. Okay, that's fine. So let's go ahead and uh, put him on, um, oh, I don't know, um, Zarelto or something. Um, oops, I can spell. <laughs> Zarelto. All right, so he's got a coupon for Zarelto. All I have to do is uh, fill in my information. Let's, uh, you know, just put it on here. And uh, I'll just do uh, T1TPOQD. Uh, I'll just do this in the morning. And let's do an e script. And he says to me, "Guess what, Joan? I've got a, I've got a, um, a coupon card. Sure, that's fine. I've got one in his profile. So what I want to do is now remember, if you didn't have one, we could build another one in there. I want to use it. There's a button down here that says use it. Now I've got Express and I've got Therapy. That's uh, what I'm using for this coupon card. Now." I've finished, you know, doing everything with this plan, so I'm going to return to where I was. I just got to get back to the main prescription screen, which is right behind this box right here. So all I have to do is hit the return, and it asks me the question. Now, this is where I wanted to explain, because that was one of the questions that was on that, um, you know, paper. It says, do you want to use the current active patient's plans as the default for the patient's new RXs? Well, no, I really only want to use Express Scripts and Therapy one time, just for the Sorelto. I certainly don't want the therapy card going through for all my new prescriptions for Mr. Mann. So I say to the system, no, no, use the current plan uh, as a default. No, I just want it one time. 
So now what I, what's going to happen is, okay, so you see this express in therapy. What this is, is it, this is a hovering mouse technique. And um, normally when you use your keyboard, you don't see that. Sometimes my mouse kind of jumps away. All right, so express in therapy. So when I press the done key, you know, it's asking me uh, about, you know, a, a, a DAW on this one. I'm going to uh, bypass that. And now it's going to go through for adjudication. And now that I want to show you that 104, I suspended this just for a second, the 10408 is going to go directly over to therapy. So it continues on with the adjudication. And now it says to me, well, therapy picked up. Now this is all simulated. As you can tell, it's simulated paid. And then the patient would pay a new amount. So when I hit the finish key, that prescription is now done. The patient gets the label. Now, let's recall the patient again, because I used that Xarelto one time, and I didn't want that uh, coupon card to be on there any more than one time, because I said no to it. All right, so let's put this patient on um, uh, Pravacol or something, or Prempexol. We'll do that. And then give them a 30, two refills, one every day. Um, and then see how the express scripts just went back to where it was. I didn't have to think, I didn't have to do anything, I have to think about it. If I needed to put a new one in, like California Medicaid or something like that, this patient is 76 Medi-Cal, I could add that. So let's go ahead and add it. Let's add another plan. So let's just say the patient just presented um, California Medicaid. So I'm just going to pull this up, put it in, put in whatever the numbers are. I make this as fake as I possibly can so nothing ever goes through. And then now I've got Express Scripts and California Medi-Cal in there. Now, again, I would return to the main screen, and it asks me again that same question. Every time I change the plans, am I going to use that as the default? If I say no, it will always go back to Express Scripts, and this is the only one that it will use, uh, you know, for California Medi-Cal. So I uh, adjudicate. I go through. Uh-oh, I lost a little bit of money, always tells me that, but I think the other plan will pick it up, and I won't have any issues. And I press the finish key, and that prescription is done. So, questions so far. Um, uh, do you have any questions so far, or does this seem pretty straightforward? Okay, sounds like um, it, it sounds like it's okay for right now. All right, let's keep going. Um, now, uh, adding a new patient. Uh, everybody gets new patients all the time, all the time. So let's say as an example, we're going to add somebody brand new, and let's just say the patient's name is, um, oh, um, I'm always at a loss for um, uh, names, Nguang, um, um, let's see. And let's uh, let's do uh, first name of um, Bill. All right, so the patient is not found. Do I want to add him to the file? I just say yes. Now, I'm just going to uh, press enter. That's all I'm doing. I'm just pressing enter, and all I'm doing is putting in his information. Now, if I wanted to capture a cell phone number, I could do that too. Um, it's easier to do it now than before than later. Uh, but you can always add it. It doesn't make any difference. Whatever his date of birth is, let's give him today. And uh, I was going to put him on Halloween. <laughs> but um, let's do the 20th, and let's do uh, his age. His age is, um, oh, I don't know, uh, 56. So 1, 2, 3, 4, um, Western uh, Avenue East. And then your zip code, um, and you'll have to forgive me. I, I don't know what your zip code is. Um, and, uh, oops, I don't have that one in there. And not that I know any California zip codes. I'm not good at that. Oh, that one's not in there, too. <laughs> 90210. I, I don't know why. That one always uh, sticks in my mind. The ship to address, email address. If I wanted to capture his email address, head of household. I can also link family members together. Employer, social security number. You can always put in the last four on their social. Put in their driver's license. Um, memo, if you have memos, and I know that was one of the questions, and I can set up a priority on this memo. Um, I can say something like, um, uh, new patient, and um, we need welcome packet, and whatever that might be. Um, I've set up a priority so that we can have that pop up. 
His allergies, uh, I'll just say no known, or if you wanted to put in, you know, sulfa, uh, we have all the codes, everything. Uh, I'll just do, um, and if you wanted to put in any kind of uh, food tel intolerance or uh, specific, uh, you know, uh, food itself, um, all those things are possible, and you can have all these different fields. Now, I just keep pressing escape when I want to get out of the box that I'm in. I don't need any more. I can set up uh, weight, height. I can residence code. I can do ICD-10 in here. And this is all the languages that we offer. So again, you know, it could be Vietnamese, Spanish. Um, if it's Korean, you'll have to forgive me. I, I, I forget if it's Arabic. I, I don't know which five they are. I'm not sure. Let's make this patient um, Hispanic. Uh, just for a second so you can see I've just made this patient Hispanic. He's 56 years old and maybe I might want to put him on an autofill program. So I can set him up on a MedSync program or I can set him up on an autofill program. Autofill, the difference between the two is, and they all come with the system, automatic filling allows you to take and if the patient is supposed to fill on the 3rd, the 17th, and the 28th, all of his prescriptions that are supposed to come due those days would be automatically filled on those days with RX30 uh, because we've got that feature built in. If you're trying to sync them to one specific day, you can also do that in RX30. So you can say to the system, he only uh, has a budget for the 30th of the month or the 1st of the month or the 15th of the month. Um, and that way, when he does come in, I can budget hit his uh, medications so his copays all rest and all medications are done on one day. And we can short fill. We can do that as well. Plus, I can also set him up for will call, meaning he'll come into the store. I can set him up to courier the medications over if you'd like. You can print a manifest if you'd like to do that, a paper manifest. Or if you'd like, you can even use, um, and I'll just flip over to this for a second. Um, if you wanted to use an iPad, you can take that out and the driver can give the signature of all the medications that the patient is taking and bring the unit back in and sync it back up to the ARC-30 system. So you'll have all of the original uh, signatures for the patient, not just on paper. So you just a thought. I just wanted to share that with you. So I'll just leave it at will call. Now, I also have the ability to do what they call an eligibility search. Suppose he's forgotten his... Um, you know, he's forgotten his um, insurance card. Not a problem, uh, because all I have to do is go out to the eligibility field. And we've done Medicare D for probably eight years now. And we've always had D, A, B, commercial lookup, Medicare D and commercial. And we also do Texas Medi-Cal. Uh, we do California Medi-Cal, Nebraska, um, New York. In other words, all 50 states that have Medicaid we do this search. So if he doesn't have his card with him, it's not an issue. It works the same way as you do with Medicare D. You just need the last uh, four on the social. It'll bring that information in and put the plan on here. Now, one of the things that I always ask, uh, you know, if you are thinking about it, maybe you might want to have this patient um, have the tech ask questions of the patient. Like, say, as an example, would you like to set um, up on our um, internet refills, our cell phone refills? Would you like to do anything like that? Um, and he says, oh, that would be good. What, what do I have to do? Well, I'm just going to flip out of this for just a second, and I'm going to show you. All you really have to do is have your staff or the patient can do it themselves. It's called RefillRx Mobile. It's free. You do not have to do anything except download it. It's free, and the patient can use it to punch in their prescription numbers and have them come right into your queue. That's all you have to do. That's a freebie. Um, another thing, uh, if your patient is saying, uh, or I could say to, this, uh, to the technician, um, why don't you go ahead and ask the patient if they want to register with our free Internet refill site. So the patient can log in and register with your free in, uh, uh, site. And it gives them a chance if they're at home, at work, wherever they are in the middle of the night, and they just want, whoops, i gotta, uh, I got to type in the right uh, uh, name, <laughs> sorry, um, www.refillrx.com. And let's go ahead in, and I have to type her name correctly.
I have several patients set up, but I just um, I use a couple over and over. So it will immediately go to the name of your store, um, you know, um, the name of your store, and all the patient has to do is uh, go right. And now if you have a website, I think you do. If you have a website, then we can embed this. So there isn't anything you have to do. We would just have this free site embedded in there, and that way the patients can go up there, and uh, there, there's no cost to you or the patient. It's all included in this um, program. So it shows the last pill that we dispensed. It also shows um, you know, the prescription number. It shows who the doctor is. It does show that this prescription on the paroxetine is available to be refilled because it's overdue. So I could click that, and I can even set up, do I want it delivered? Do I want to pick it up? And then all the patient would have to do is scroll down to the bottom, see all the meds that they have. So if they forget which ones they're taking and don't really know anything about which ones can and can't be done because they haven't you know, looked real closely at the bottles, it's all right here. So um, they can even write you a note. I mean, I, I could even write you a note if I wanted to, and it would come right into the ARC-30 system. So these are things that you can set the patient up on. If you'd like, I mean, you don't have to. It all comes with the system. But I wanted to show you that's what that whole refill or XID is. And then what the, one of the reasons I took his cell phone number is maybe he might want to be text. He, I mean, he's 56 years old. Maybe he might want to be text to tell him his prescriptions are ready to come in and pick them up. If you like that option, fine. If you don't, you don't have to turn it on at all. These are all part of what RX30 contains. And you can also set it up so we can notify him when prescriptions are coming due. And that's one of the things that um, you know we were talking about uh, in, in that questionnaire. Can I actually set him up to know who the patients are that are supposed to be coming in? You sure can. And I can also let him know that they're supposed to be coming due. Um, and also when he needs to come in and pick them up. So just you know some, some very basic things. I mean, we can even do so many more things. But I'll just stop at that for right now. And now um, I've finished setting him up. So let's go ahead, if, um, if we want to, and go ahead and return to the main prescription filling screen because that's where I was. You know, I, I initially put his name in and he wasn't in there, so it took me over to the patient record. And I, I did a little bit of overkill on this. I, I put too many things in, but I wanted to show you what some of those fields are that you could capture. So I'm just going to return to the prescription filling screen because that's where I was before and see how that patient packet, um, I need a new patient and we need a new welcome packet for him, that little patient memo popped up. Now I'm going to scan his prescription. Uh, again, if it was an electronic prescription that came in, I would put in the doctor, whoever the doctor is, and then we would just start beginning filling. And one of the questions that was asked had to do with brand generic. So this uh, prescription is for Valium 10, and that's fine. I select it, but then I also have my diazepam. And I can just go ahead and select this a diazepam. And then it'll go ahead and, oh, I've got a DUR interaction. And you can also um, do your DUR interaction while you're on the screen, or you could do it um, uh, afterwards. And I'll, I'll just show you. There's a DUR uh, right in here, a DUR intervention. Oops, I forgot. i got to put my quantity in. Let's put in the quantity and do two refills. I, I think it's three, uh, three refills. Sorry, three refills. And this is uh, BID, right? And there is my Spanish, because we made him an Hispanic patient. And then it uh, falls to my day supply. And then I'm ready to adjudicate. Now, I didn't put a plan on this patient. This is just a cash prescription. Now, um, I set him up on autofill and set him up for will call. If I decided at the last moment that I, I forgot to put his plan in, it's no big um, issue. All you have to do is go over here and just put him on a plan. And let's just say we're going to use United Healthcare. By the way, we have all uh, 2,800 plans in the system as well. So if you don't have and you've got a BIN number and you don't even know what that plan is, we can put that in and it will immediately um, take hold in the system. So now what I'm doing is I'm hitting the done key. It adjudicates my claim and I get my uh, paid prescription. I can recall him again, just, just like you did before. I don't have to remember his name. There's a diazepam. I can scan another prescription. And again, you do not have to scan if this is not even anything that you want to get into. Say he's on warfarin. We're going to give him, oh, I've got a possible DUR. Oh, I forgot to do the DUR. Hold on, let's do the DUR. All right. 
And then I can do the DUR right here if you want to, right on the DUR intervention. It says drug allergy alert. And then I can do my drug interaction, medication review, and the outcome is, you know, um, we're, um, we're probably filled as it's, it's fine. And uh, it just improved quality of life. I'll just save that. So I can put this together, and once I've saved it, I can even print it out for the patient if I need to, but it's stored in the system now, so I can always pull this up later on. So when I press the Done key, that, that script is on its way. One of the other questions was on short fill. Now let's put this patient on a MedSync program. All right, so he's not on one right now, but what we're going to do is we're going to put him on a MedSync program. So all I have to do is uh, let's put him on uh, Lysinopril or something. We'll just select that one. I, I keep getting his uh, interactions I, it's because I've got those, um, you know, uh, interactions in there. All right, so let's put him on a MedSync program. So I say to him, all, oh, by the way, you probably say to me, how did I get there? I press the Alt and the S for the sync. So I'm right on there, and um, he said to me, you know, um, I don't know, do you know, um, I don't know that the 20th is the best day for me. I probably would be better because I get paid towards the end of the month. Can we do that? So the system pulls up an anchor date, and it says, oh, by the way, this should be your anchor date. And I say, no. He says, no. So I ask him the question, and all I have to do is move it to a new sync date. He says, what date is that? The 30th. So the new sync date is the 30th. So we're going to short fill a 10-day supply. Remember, um, today's the 20th, so 30th is the best. And now once I save that, it's going to do, um, you know, a 10-day supply on a short fill. And by the way, when I send it through United, see how it says 30 and 10 dispensed? And it's a 10-day supply. So the minute that the 30th comes up, I would be able to refill this again for a full 30 count. But in the meantime, I'm telling United in the background, uh, it's a third-party plan option. Here's an override. I'm doing a med sync for this patient under the SCC code. See where it says 47, override refill too soon? Um, that's my code that the system has selected for me to adjudicate to United. So when I press the done key, we're only doing a 10-day supply for this patient. And then it will immediately go right in uh, to, you know, um, uh, um, a synced medication later on. Now, when I bring this patient back up again, you probably see that this script now is in green. Uh, the script number is in green. That means that it's in a, a MedSync program. If I wanted to put any other uh, prescriptions in a MedSync program, I can sync them on that date, put them all in that same date, or, you know, just continue on. So it makes it. And by the way, once we've done that, it usually asks us the question, do you want to put this patient on a MedSync program? So I'll just do this for Motadine, and uh, I'll do 30 and two refills. And it asked me the question, since I put one script on MedSync, it asked me if I'd like to sync this the script, and I say yes. And now what I'm going to do is it's going to put it on, you know, uh, the 30th, because that's the one I did. And now when I save that, it's going to do the same thing that it did for the other one. And I press, you know, the done key, and it's going to adjudicate. So it always asks me that. All I have to do is put one on, and it starts asking me that for each one uh, other than that. So again. You know, when you see his profile, see those are two synced scripts and warfarin and diazepam are not. Now, uh, questions so far on this? Uh, so far, any questions? Raise your hand or speak up um, on your on your microphone. Anything? Any questions so far? Okay, let's keep going. All right. So um, let's just say uh, I wanted to. Um, uh, project who are my patients that are coming into the pharmacy and I want to make sure that I uh, catch my inventory because you know that's that's big inventory is big well uh, our system is really simple this is the menu key right here and all I'm going to do is press it and I'm just going to move right over here to what they call the refills due now I know that there are a lot of different areas of the system I don't want you to get uh, overwhelmed by it because um, uh, this is new to you. There are lots of things that are in RX30 that you're um, you're going to use, and lots of things you're not. This one right here is something you would use quite often. 
So this gives me a chance to automatically say to the system, give me a report so I can forecast who my patients are, you know, who, who's the patients, and I can also forecast the inventory if I want. So um, it sets it up for a two-week period, but, you know, that's a little too far in advance. I just want to know who's supposed to be coming in by the 25th. That's all I really want to know. So you set the date range, and then all you have to do is hit the print button, and what it'll do is it'll tell me who the patients are, shows me who they are, and shows me their meds. And at the bottom, it also tells me what medications we need to stock if we're going to keep, um, you know, these patients compliant on their medications. There's so many in here. <laughs> I do a lot of demos. Um, here's my list. So these are the medications in alphabetical order. And you would have, likely, your reorder number from the wholesaler right here. These are the meds that I use. And this is what I need to stock. It shows me quantity needed for refill. How many I have on hand. So, as you can tell, you know, I need to restock. Now, this is good because you can walk the shelf and you can compare it against this particular report. Plus, it shows me who the patients are. So, in case you wanted to call them, that's fine. If you don't want to call them, that's okay. Um, you can set them up on autofill. And you can also let the a system do the work for you. Um, it's, it's totally up to you. I can set, um, and this is my main menu key. I just want to know about um, prescriptions that need to be refilled. Well, my system in the background, now I've got you know, my system set up so it does all these things uh, two or three days in advance. Uh, that's all I'm doing. I'm just setting this up. When I hit the begin key, believe it or not, it's actually going to, I'll leave my mouse up here, it's finding all the prescriptions that it can refill and it's doing all the work for me. It's adjudicating, it's printing them out on the label printer, and what it's doing is I don't have to touch this. So anything that's in your queue that's a refill that needs to be done, um, anything a clean script, in other words, you know, if it's a clean script, it'll go through. If it's not, then, you know, we don't, um, we would have it in our uh, DUR file. Now, those no quantities would have faxed the doctor. I'd turn my doctors off because my doctors are real and my patients are fake. So if they ever went through, the doctors would wonder who in the heck that is. So it's running on its own. I'm not touching it. It's doing all this by itself. And it just runs through real quickly, and it runs through all day long. So this is another one of those ways that you can, um, you know, get your um, drugs ordered, get your patients set. Make sure that you adjudicate your claims and run them all through. And that's what this whole thing is about, is preparing for all those patients who are supposed to be, you know, coming in for refills. That way, they're, uh, you're, um, you know, you're basically helping them stay compliant. And you're helping yourself in the pharmacy because you're making it much more attractive and easy for you to, to move through this because the system's doing all the work for you. So, um, you know, it just keeps doing all this. Now, I would just let it run in the background. I mean, that's, that's all it is, and I'll just go to another screen for a sec. So I've got a fresh screen, so I'm just going to let it run in the background for me. Um, that's autofill, and uh, forecasting your inventory and using autofill will help you quite a bit in your store, and it, you know, makes life easier for you. Now, one of the other questions that was asked had to do with the inventory levels, um, you know, inventory control. So, um, if you are, uh, you know, happy with uh, using an inventory control program, I would encourage you to. I've set it up so you can see uh, how many different versions, or I should say manufacturers, of lisinopril that I had used in my system. But I've blocked them from refills. So the Sandoz brand 10 milligram. I've blocked it from refills. I've told the system, block it. I don't want the tech looking at it. She doesn't need to use it. I don't want it inadvertently being used. And then I can also go back up to, see, this one's blocked. This one is active and preferred. You probably saw that on the Myelin brand. Let's go ahead and I'll clear that off so you can see this because it's easier. See how I've set that up for preferred? It's red. Now, this one represents the fact that it's um, in a, a, um, it's mapped to a robot. It turns the NDC number green. 
and it shows me the count. So see, I've got 90 count on myelin on the shelf, and I've got 1,060 in the, in the robotic cell. This is the one that I'm using right now um, from the shelf, and I can set my inventory levels if you want, and you'll have to tell me if you're using inventory control or not. If you are, we have the same features that you have right now. Your cost file will come in from the wholesaler, so whomever it is that you're using, and you have to forgive me, I don't know who it is. I'll just select one. It could be Cardinal. It could be ABC. It could be anybody. And um, whoever it is will import your acquisition cost automatically. You don't have to do anything to, to put it in. We put those in for you, and it will slide it right in every day or every week. Usually it's every week from the wholesaler. So if you're using Cardinal, you know, um, whoever, whatever that wholesaler is, um, we'll have those numbers in there for you, and it brings in all of your cost files. If you wanted to put in a reorder point, certainly, you know, you can set up your reorder point. So at the, at the point that I get to 70, it'll order me a bottle of 100, and I can put in whatever I want. And you can also uh, do it manually. I don't know if you're interested in this, but if you don't want to set up your inventory levels, we have another one of those free little apps which I think is pretty uh, nice. Uh, let's, it's called um, RX30 um, Inventory App. Okay, so um, RX30 Inventory looks like this. You would just use a cell phone. So if you could, imagine your tech goes in there and she can use an iPad or she can use an iPhone and she can barcode scan the NDC number and punch in how many you just got. And once it does that, there, this button turns to commit and it uploads the uh, inventory right on to your on hand, right there. So if you're not a fan of doing reordering with perpetual inventory, don't worry about it because we have another way as well. You can use the perpetual inventory program, again, which comes with it, or this free app. And you can download it and use it. So when your totes come in the next day, as the truck arrives, all you have to do really is just um, use the barcode scanner. Have her go up and pull each of the bottles out and scan them. Put in whatever she's received and then it will upload it in so you always have your on-hand quantity. And the reason I say that is because, uh, and you'll see in a second, um, this is um, you know really uh, helpful for you. I'll just do um, this patient. Look at this triumphrine. See how it says on hand negative 446? See how it does that? But if I were to do a new prescription for him, and remember I pulled up that um, lisinopril earlier, the lisinopril 10, the myelin. See how it tells me how many I have on hand? So I don't have to, um, that's what's nice about the inventory program because I would know before I would even start um, data entry, I would know uh, as soon as I put that in, that's exactly what I have on the shelf. Now, um, one of the reasons that uh, I showed you the inventory had to do with one of the questions was um, uh, your sea sauce, and um, I'll just do, um, maybe I'll do Roxy set or something. It doesn't matter which one I use. All right, so on your Schedule 2s, uh, what will happen is you can set up uh, your reorder points on here. You, know, might, you, you might want to just do your uh, sea sauce with just, uh, you know, your, your uh, scheduled drugs. And that's fine. You can do that. It will it will give you that ability to just enter that information. So the rest of the drugs, you can do another way. Or uh, again, um, you know, it'll it'll generate your CSOS report. Um, you can put your reorder points in. Now, when that purchase order is generated, so what'll happen is it will generate the purchase order directly to um, your wholesaler. So again, we'll just use you know, one of the wholesalers, your primary wholesaler, and I can say, uh, I'll just limit it to Cardinal for right now. And when I hit the begin key, it's running through any of my scheduled drugs. I mean, you know, the ones that I would have set up. Oh, of course, I didn't have anything in there. I should have dispensed the Roxy set and it would, it would have generated one. Okay, so imagine that you have your um, purchase order generated. It'll give you a chance to edit it, and you'll have to forgive me, I don't have anything in here, so let's just build one. I'll just say uh, Cardinal on this one. And then I'll just maybe order Roxy set or something. And you can do a manual version as well. And again, I don't know what you have right now, so um, you'll have to forgive me. Then you can clear your item, and let's just do a hydrocodone. I'll do an APAP. 
and I'll just say two bottles. Oh, that's, oh wait, that's too many. That's a 500. And let's say we're going to do, um, 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 I want to do, um, one bottle of 100. So I've built a purchase order, and now it's going to give me a chance to generate the purchase order. And when I hit the begin key, these are the items, you know, that uh, would go to uh, Cardinal. Now, um, I can, st uh, bear with me for a second. That didn't come up. Let's get out of that. I want to look at that Cardinal one again, just for a sec. There they are. Um, okay, so this is the order that I want to send through. These are the items. If I needed to adjust it, I could see, you know, the, uh, so if you would, pretend that everything that I had on my Schedule 2s were um, generated, and I had these three that were ordering for the day. So um, it would have dropped below that, and then it would, you know, put it on to that purchase order. And when I generate that purchase order, I'll just say yes. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, purchase order. Generate all submitted purchase orders. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and um, begin that. And go ahead and submit it. All right. So that's been generated. When I get my receipt, I'll get that um, cardinal receipt. And it will also tell me which items were received. So here are the items that were received. Now, if I had zero on one, you know, it would adjust it. And by the way, it will adjust it. It will not upload that to the on hand at all if it says zero on the received. All right, so let's get out of this. And what will happen is um, when I press this done key, it will update everything. It will put all those right onto my shelf. And now it will also give me, you know, my list of all the meds that we just got. And that CSOS report is actually going, and I can export this if I want to. And I update the inventory, and now all those drugs are back on my shelf. So if I pull up my Roxy set, my Roxy set is now on my shelf. If I pull up my hydrocodone, oh, you'll have to forgive me. I forgot which one. How about the Percocet? I can't remember which one I had. And then my Percocet, uh, this was, I believe we uh, did this one. Uh, no, it must have been the other one. I, I forgot which one I, I updated. Hmm. Uh, you'll have to forgive me. I forgot which one I updated. I forgot which brand it was that I used. I guess it was this one. Um, and let's look at the uh, notes on it just to make sure. I, just, I don't know if there was a memo note on it or not. Maybe not. Not sure if it was or not. But um, the trainer, uh, by the way, I'm not a trainer, as you can tell. Uh, the trainer would actually work with you to develop your entire list, tell you what you need to do for your quantities on hand, show you how to order on your CSOS reports so that it generates properly. And then what we do is we just pull your list of all of your reports from your sales on your CSOS, you know, for your scheduled drugs. And then we generate that list, and then your staff can actually go in there and set up your uh, reorder points for uh, for that generated purchase order. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, other things that were on that list, I'm trying to remember. Um, I'm not uh, I'm not remembering too many other things. I think we've kind of covered all of these. Please let me know what I haven't touched on. Um, uh, please send me a a little message so um, you can tell me what I'm missing here. Any thoughts? Um, if you can, just use your little chat button. It's right there, and you can type me a message. That way I can hear uh, or read what it is that you have questions about. Um, any thoughts for right now? OK. Um, I can continue uh, uh, to do these demos for you if you'd like. Um, again, you know, this is a, a one of those intros uh, to show you how RX30 works. And I've dived, uh, I, um, I've uh, dove into this, I've dived, I've dove into this uh, a little deeper than I normally do. But um, 
filling and refilling are your main and most important things, and that's where I wanted to bring you over here to the Arc Study University because I could demo all day long, you know, and show you all these things, but we have everything that you're using in PCC, or sorry, PPC, and then some. In fact, really a whole lot more. Will you use all of it? Maybe, maybe not. But you have the ability, and one of the things that we try to help you with is learning it. Uh, you could watch me all day long, but until you get your hands on it and have your own data and be able to watch these videos and do it in your own time, uh, what we do is we send the server to you so that you can have this. Uh, you'll still be using PPC. You'll have the server in the back. You'll be able to, or right there on the counter, wherever you want it. You'll be able to practice and watch the videos and even play on your own data. That's what this is all about. We want you to play on your own data. And you can't ruin it. There isn't anything you can ruin. Uh, we override everything. So anything you had in there when we originally um, started uh, copying your data, will still remain, and then we copy up to the point in which you would go live on ARC30. So I, I do hope that this was helpful as a starting point for you. And you know, if you have any other questions, please um, let either Carolyn or myself know if she hasn't sent you the paperwork uh, so that you can you know, look at the um, offering that we have. We have a you know, very attractive offering to um, upgrade you to RX30. So I hope you've had a chance to look at that. If not, I can get Carolyn to get in touch with you, and, and then she can uh, you know, go through these things point by point with you. So I hope that's been you know, a little bit of a starting point helpful for you. And uh, again, just let me know what questions you have. But um, I'd like to thank you for joining me today, and um, I hope you have a good afternoon. And um, my, my uh, thoughts are, uh, I know that you're busy on Friday, so um, Derek and May, thank you very much. My, my very heartfelt thanks for being on today. Take care. Have a good afternoon.